Before we dive into today's topic, let's think about this. Most poker players don't lose because of bad math. They lose because of bad assumptions. Solvers don't fail because the math is wrong. They fail because poker is human. Today, we're going to expose one of the biggest GTO myths in modern poker, the belief that GTO is a complete strategy. Players think if they memorize enough charts, enough frequencies, they can bypass the chaos of live games. But the moment you sit down in a full-ring cash game with human beings making emotional, unpredictable decisions, the entire model breaks. Before we go any further, a quick note. This video is the condensed version of a much deeper masterclass I wrote for Poker Railbird Plus members. What you're getting here is the streamlined framework. If you want the full detailed breakdown, the math, the examples, the psychology, and the complete Poker Railbird philosophy behind it, join us on Substack. The link is in the description and pinned comment below. I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com. Let's get into it. I decided to make this video because over the past few years, I've watched more and more players try to copy solver strategy in live games, and it's costing them a fortune. One example stands out clearly. A few nights ago, a player sat down at my table with full GTO confidence, solver-approved sizes, balanced ranges, relentless continuation bets, the whole template. Within a few hours, he burned through $2,000. Not because he played the math wrong, but because the table didn't match the model. And that's the real issue. GTO is getting promoted online as if it's the universal answer to poker, as if you can just memorize charts and frequencies and suddenly navigate chaotic live cash games. But the reality is far different. So this video exists for one reason, to explain, in a simple, honest way, where GTO actually works and why it breaks the moment you sit across from real, emotional, unpredictable human beings. Before I go any further, let me make something clear. We're not here to bash GTO. I use GTO myself for specific situations, and it's one of the most powerful study tools we have in poker. When applied correctly and in the right environment, GTO is brilliant. But we need to be honest about what GTO actually is, and what it isn't. GTO is not a strategy. It's not a belief system. And it's not a rulebook you apply to every lineup. GTO is a mathematical model, a blueprint for perfectly balanced play if both players are making equally perfect decisions. In other words, GTO is a baseline, a reference point, a way to understand what's possible in a theoretical, controlled environment. The problem is that many players hear the word optimal and assume it means optimal everywhere, in every hand, every lineup, every table dynamic. But GTO was never meant to function that way. Think of GTO as a tool. Useful, elegant, mathematically sound, but only when the conditions match the model. GTO absolutely works when the environment matches what it was designed for. If you put two disciplined, technically sound players heads up or in a shorthanded online game where the ranges are tight, the decisions are structured and both players are reacting logically. GTO becomes incredibly powerful. It shines when the lineup is stable, when the pot isn't going multi-way, when opponents aren't tilting, and when everyone is making consistent decisions based on ranges instead of emotions. That's why solvers dominate high-stakes online games. The player pool is disciplined, the variables are controlled, and the decisions are largely rational. In that kind of environment, equilibrium-based thinking makes perfect sense. It's math against math, and the cleaner the inputs, the cleaner the outputs. But the moment the environment changes, the moment emotion enters the picture, or the pot goes multi-way, or someone starts calling because they're bored or tilted, that equilibrium collapses. Here's where the wheels come off. GTO assumes a world that simply doesn't exist in most live full ring cash games. It assumes your opponents think in terms of ranges, frequencies, balance, minimum defense, pot odds, and long-term equilibrium. But sit down in any casino, any night, and watch what actually happens. Players call just to see one more card. They raise because they're bored. They fold because the last hand rattled them. They chase because they're tilted. They level themselves. They level each other. They get scared, excited, frustrated, distracted. None of that fits the model. And the moment one opponent deviates from equilibrium, even slightly, the entire solver structure collapses. Multiway pots? GTO isn't built for that. Loose colors? GTO undervalues value betting and overvalues bluffing. Type players who only raise with premiums? Solver lines lose money because the ranges aren't balanced anymore. Players who never bluff big rivers? Your solver-approved call becomes torching money. And here's the bigger point. In live games, 
these deviations aren't rare. They're constant. They're the norm. A strategy built for perfect opponents fails the moment it meets imperfect behavior. And live poker is full of imperfect behavior, which is exactly why GTO-trained players often struggle. They're trying to apply equilibrium to an environment that's chaotic, emotional, unbalanced, and multi-way. Live poker is not stable. Ranges shift hand-to-hand -hand based on confidence, fear, frustration, ego, and momentum. That's why you can't just copy solver outputs and expect them to work. The people in the chairs don't behave like the people inside the solver. This is the part of poker that no solver can understand, the human element. Solvers don't feel pressure. They don't feel fear. They don't get tired, tilted, embarrassed, or frustrated. They don't react to a big loss or a bad beat. They don't tighten up when the table gets wild, and they don't loosen up when they're bored. But people do. I've played for more than 25 years, and one thing has always been true. You can learn more from a player by watching how they react to tension than by studying their range on a chart. Humans reveal themselves through emotion. A hesitation that wasn't there before. A sudden change in tempo. A forced smile after a missed bet. A deep breath before calling. A stack being shuffled differently than the last orbit. Solvers can't model any of that. They treat a hand as a static decision tree. But live poker is fluid. Every decision is shaped by everything that came before it. The wins, the losses, the environment, the personalities, the mood of the table, and the player's internal state in the moment. That's why forcing solver outputs into live play often feels like wearing someone else's glasses. The prescription doesn't match the environment. The information the solver assumes is there simply isn't. And this is where great live players excel. They recognize the patterns behind human behavior, not just the ranges. They understand that poker isn't played by machines. It's played by people, and people are never perfectly balanced. That's the real advantage in live poker. Not knowing the theory, but knowing the humans sitting across from you. So let's talk about how you should actually use GTO in live poker. GTO is a baseline nothing more, nothing less. It's the starting point that helps you understand what balanced poker should look like in a perfect environment. But live games are anything but perfect. The real skill isn't copying solver lines. It's knowing when to stay close to the baseline and when to throw it out entirely because the player in front of you doesn't behave anything like the model. That's where real edge comes from. If your table is loose, you tighten up. If your table is tight, you loosen up. If someone hates pressure, you apply pressure. If someone calls too much, you value bet thinner and stop bluffing. None of that comes from a solver. That comes from reading people, not charts. It comes from understanding table dynamics, momentum shifts, emotional reactions, and the difference between the way poker looks on a spreadsheet and the way it feels at a real table. GTO is the map. Live poker is the terrain. The map is useful, but only if you know how to adjust when the terrain changes. And in live games, the terrain is always changing. At the end of the day, this is the heart of the issue. Solvers don't fail because the math is wrong. Solvers fail because poker is human. People aren't balanced. They aren't always predictable. They don't follow equilibrium. They react to emotion, confidence, fear, frustration, momentum, and a thousand invisible variables that no solver can measure. And that's why real edge in live poker comes from understanding humans, not memorizing charts. GTO gives you the map. Live poker demands that you navigate the terrain. And that's what the full masterclass is about. How to blend theory with people, how to adjust to unpredictable opponents, and how to build a strategy that works in the real world, not the theoretical one. If you found value in this condensed version, do me a favor, hit like, share it with a player who needs it, and subscribe to the channel. And for those of you who want the full, in-depth material, join us on Poker Railbird Plus, hosted on Substack. That's where we publish long-form strategy pieces like the Rampage Effect, Why Do You Play Poker, The Paradox of Patience, and new premium articles every month. You'll find the link in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the tables.